everybody welcome back to another exciting episode of vc tv which is the venture capital tv i'm just i'm from la token my apologies today we're going to discuss about pitch deck and fundraising strategy and also we, we're joined here today by a founder who is going to be uh, talking and speaking and sharing about his project so this is a very interesting topic uh, today, a uh, pitch deck and fundraising strategy, because this is the fundamentals uh, of our fundraising. So let's quickly start on our show today with a quick round of intro of the speakers and the, um, obviously the, 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 the competition, the pitch competition as well. It's not a competition, but somebody's going to be uh, presenting to raise funds as well. So let's go into straight into the panel today uh hi everyone thanks for joining hello good morning good afternoon uh from wherever you're dialing in today i see familiar faces um and we have uh pascal who is going to be um sharing and presenting his project um, okay, let's have a quick round of intro for that. Quickly introducing myself. My name is Sunny Mohanty. Uh, so I'm the regional director of Latio Convention in Singapore. Uh, I moderate shows. I host shows uh, every day, Monday to Friday. Thanks for joining me today, all of you. I hope everybody is doing good. Um, so let's start with a quick uh, round of intro. I'm going to start with Kingsley. Hi, Kingsley. Welcome back. Nice to see you again today. How are you? Fine, Sonny. How are you doing? How's Singapore? How's everyone? What you doing over there? Yes, I'm good. Singapore is good. We have a mini lockdown. I say it's a mini lockdown because the shops are still open. We just can't out, cannot eat out. That's, that's the only thing. However, Everything oh, is uh, like, good. I'm always good. Uh, Tokyo is, is rainy today, but it's good. I, I mean, those uh, it's nice to see everyone again, familiar faces, and uh, good to see uh, Noah. I think it's, it's my first time of meeting you on the, the guy pitching. Uh, my name is Kingsley Kobayashi. I'm a serial entrepreneur, uh, blockchain and traditional investor. Mm -hmm. uh, I invest in startups, I invest in commercial uh, real estate. I invest in clean energy and uh, I have uh, a few companies uh, that are diversi uh, diversified into different categories. We have uh, the natural pharmaceutical company, we have uh, clean energy companies, so we have we have about 10 or 9 companies right now with, with that other on on Kobayashi, Kobayashi group that we do work with and invest in different, uh, in different space. So it's a pleasure to be here today and uh, looking to listen to uh to the pitch is going to be today hopefully we can invest in it ha 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 yes thank you thank you so much kingsley so yes pascal you just uh, pascal is sorry as you heard it like you know possibly somebody is looking to invest as well at kingsley thank you kingsley for that intro next up gary hi gary good morning how are you i'm great how are you doing this morning i am great thank you for asking <laughs> Yeah, so it's good to see some uh, familiar and friendly faces today. Vandana, Kingsley, Harsh, I see Novo, Devang. So um, my name is Gary Fowler. I'm a serial entrepreneur, investor. Um, I love unicorns. I've done uh, two unicorns, 17 companies, very involved in AI. In fact, my next article, uh, my, actually my next article in Forbes is on African startups, uh, and uh, my next article after that is on uh, hyper automation and artificial intelligence. Love to write. Now 143 articles. The uh, AI is our new electricity and quantum computing is our turbocharger. We'll look at some of the issues recently in the U.S., 45 percent of the energy reserves energy on the East Coast of the United States was affected by a cyber attack. So we need to make sure that we're diligent and we're very, very interested in cybersecurity solutions, decentralized. That's it. It's great to be here. Great to see friends. And uh, I'm the CEO, co-founder of GST Venture Studios, a premier AI and quantum venture studio. Absolutely. Likewise, Gary. Good to always good to have you on our show. Um, thank you so much. Great to be here. <laughs> Next, I have Noah. Hi, Noah. Good morning. 
Hi, everyone. Um, I pronounced your name correctly, first of all. Noah, yeah. Noah is pronounced correctly. Last name is Pickholtz. Um, it's like woodpecker in uh, German, sort of. Um, coming in from Jerusalem, Israel. Uh, so it's very nice to have a little bit of a break. Um, a partner at a quantitative hedge fund uh, that focuses on leveraging artificial intelligence to make uh, intelligent investment decisions. Also invested in about 45 different startups spanning cybersecurity, clean energy, artificial intelligence, and many other different types of uh, sectors and segments. Um, also invested in a number of other uh, venture funds because you know what? A lot of people do a lot of great work. So thank you very much, uh, Sunny, for giving me the opportunity. No worries. A pleasure is all mine. And welcome to VCTV, Noah. Good to have you today. Thank all righty. Next, I see Hush. Hush, good morning. How are you? Good afternoon, sorry. How are you? <laughs> hey, Sunny. I'm glad. I'm extreme, doing extremely well. Unfortunately, my area has been hit with a cyclone since the last two days. Thankfully, wow. my connectivity is holding up. <laughs> Wow, so, you have the virus and the uh, and the wow cyclone now. Okay. Yeah, it's completely crazy. So, anyways, I'm glad to be here. Glad to be with a lot of familiar faces, uh, Vandana, Devang, Gary, Kingsley, and we have a new new guest as well in Nova. So, glad to see everyone here. So, just a short uh, intro about myself. I'm a venture partner with Our Ventures, uh, founder with Startup Hackers. We are essentially a Facebook group of 800 plus people where we are helping all these stage startups grow their business and we additionally help startups raise funds all the way up to 10 million dollars. Our primary focus is in the Asia and the Middle East market. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hash, and welcome back on BCTV. Devang, welcome back. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I heard Cyclone. Yeah, uh, I think it just passed Mumbai yesterday, thankfully, with minimal damage. Uh, so it's a, it's a good break from that too. Uh, good to see everyone, um, old friends, new friends, uh, Kingsley, Vandana, Harsh, Gary, hello. And uh, a, a, a special hello to Noah and Pascal. I am uh, Devang Mehta, a partner at Antel Ventures, a speed scaling ecosystem. We invest in scale early stage companies at pre A and series A in three verticals, uh, urban tech, consumer tech, and healthcare. Uh, healthcare is what I, um, you know, I'm managing from my investing and scaling standpoint, and uh, we have a initial area of interest. Our primary area of interest is oncology and adjacency, so early detection, cures, genomics, sequencing, things like that. I'm based here in Mumbai, India, and uh, you know, great to be here. Thanks. Thank you, Vivang, and welcome back again um, uh, to VCTV. Next, I have Vandana. Hi, Vandana. How are you today? Hi, Sunny. Uh, I'm good. Thank you for having me here. Um, nice to see Gary, Harsh, Noha, Devang, Kingsley, all of us with a happy family time. I see Gary smiling again. <laughs> so I think he's up to something. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, um, I was in Singapore and Jakarta for uh, 15 years in investment banking. I had my own family office fund there. And this is my uh, seventh year back in India. I did some investments and then I went back to advisory. Currently, I'm connected with 300 investors globally and I pick up global deals. We are sector agnostic. Um, we typically pick up $1 million uh, to $25 million. And thank you once again for having me here. Thank you, Vandana. What did you do? I'm <laughs> 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 no, just kidding. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> so, <we> again. <laughs> not, not, not me yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh all right good to see a smiling face as always um you know it's good to see uh, people happy thank you uh last but not least haskell uh a quick intro about yourself haskell and then um we go uh to a presentation in the second half of the show okay um uh, let me select window 
Oh, sorry, Pascal, you can start with the intro uh, about yourself and then we go to the presentation in the second half of no, the show. No, no problem. I just, I just wanted to get it ready. So it's just the German in me. Hi, guys. I'm Pascal. I'm an Italo German. As you can see, I don't look totally German. So that's my Italian roots that are looking here. So Noah Pickholz is how you pronounce it in German. Because <laughs> nice German name. Um, by the way, so um, I'm, I, I'm, I, I grew up in Germany and I did my degree in Canada. I, I'm an economist with, with a minor in, in computer science. After Canada, I went to Taiwan, worked there in the, in the software business since, uh, since uh, right after university, uh, was uh, working at Silicon Valley, was the EMEA manager for Samsung software data systems. Uh, then worked also for a Silicon Alley company, grew a company from 40 to 200 people. That was my biggest thing. Uh, did roughly 50 million in three years for the company. And then I said, I got to do this for myself. And this is where I'm here in this venture. I, I decided to, to come up with Coin Analyst, uh, a solution to help the people and to solve a problem in the market because my friends were telling me all their problems. And I'm going to share with you later in my presentation what problems they had. And that's why I came in because I do big data AI since 10 years. I happened to be in the right space early on. And now I can take leverage and leverage that uh, hype topic now that I was working on since 10 years now. Awesome, Pascal. So you were also in Taiwan. So basically, you've been yeah. you've been in uh, Asia as well. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you live two years there, you've got to speak some. Yeah, I'm, I just can do a little bit of a show. That's it. I mean, right, right. Welcome, welcome, Pascal. And yes, we are very, very excited to know more about Coin Analyst. Wonderful. I'm, I'm happy and I'm happy to see that there's so much interest for uh, AI and so much knowledge here with, you know, and so I'm glad to be to share with this with you. So Coin Analyst um, is, is the vision of Coin Analyst. I hope you can see my screen now. Is it, is it uh, visible? Uh, okay. So Pascal, can we, uh, sorry, I just wanted to tell you, can we uh, sure. start the presentation in the second half? Sure, so, of course. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Okay, great. So we are done with all the introductions of our speakers of the panel today. So today's topic is, is about pitch deck and fundraising. So let's start with a quick um, a fundamentals about uh, pitch deck. What is a pitch deck? Um, Vandana, what is a pitch deck? Let's start with you. So, um, hi, everybody. So pitch deck is one of the very, very... Uh, important documents that you must have in order in order to pitch your uh, company to the investors. Uh, it is a PDF document of 15 slides and it has to be in a certain order uh, and has to be made by a professional and presented in the right manner uh, to the investors. And this document helps you get investments. So, um, you know, and it is also important to have a video pitch deck, uh, which is trending nowadays, which helps you to present uh, your company in a short form in a video format. So I would highly recommend all the startups uh, and all the audiences that are watching this webinar uh, to have these two documents uh, definitely in order and done it by a professional because all the founders of the company don't have the talent or skills to make this document. Uh, so that's my take. On it. Thank you so much, Vandana. Yes, I've actually read about video pitch decks, so, so I'd like to know more. Kingsley, so what are different formats of pitch deck that we have now? I've seen only PDF pitch deck before, but now as Vandana said, we have video pitch deck. And what's the significance of a pitch deck when you are actually pitching uh, before the investors? I, I would just tell you what I, what I, what I look for uh, from a pitch deck. Uh, pitch deck is very simple. Uh, it's involving uh, the pitch deck you used to give uh, before the pandemic is different from what you what you give right now because then you will have like 10 slides, these slides, but right now the shorter it is, the better. Even a one pager that presents your your PowerPoints, why you are the one to solve that problem. It's, it's your business plan, a brief explanation of your business plan. Why is it that you are the one that can solve the problem? What problem are you solving? You know, how much do you, your, 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 how much do you need, your, your finances, your track record, 
uh, I mean, your PowerPoint, your, your team, who is behind your team, if your team Buffett, is it global, is it narrow-minded, do you have the right HRO, uh, do you have the right people to do the job for you, are you hardworking, are you able to actually catch my attention? Because uh, even when I was going from country to country listening to uh, founders pitch, you find out that they will, they will get into their pitching and then they will forget to ask for money. You know, they will just tell you everything. Then they don't tell you how much they want and how are they, they're going to use that money. And then what is the exit strategy? A, a pitch deck must contains all these you know, rudiments, whether, whether, whether they are video pitch deck, whether they are one page up pitch deck or the normal slide pitch deck, which is about 10 pages or so. Yes, it is important you get someone to uh, make a very good one for you, but you should be able to explain your business your project in a very simple manner that a five years old or a six years old can understand it. Because you have to understand that most investors have old money. They are not digital. So it is very important for you to be able to reach all the audience, captivate their attention and keep them there for as long as you can. Because the truth is most investors don't have 10 minutes to spend with you. They have a lot of projects. So make it as short as possible go to the points, catch their attention, and then you, you, you have a kill uh, instead of beating around the bush. So this is, my, this is what I look for in, in people. If you know your project, you'll be able to tell me in five minutes or three minutes what you want to do with my money and how you want to use my money and how I, I I'll get my money back. Right. Thank you, Kingsley. Pascal, I hope you're listening. <laughs> so I just quickly saw your pitch take flashed on the screen. <laughs> Thank you. Take, Noah. Taking note. Take note. Oh, quick, oh. Make, 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 uh, quick question, however. I mean, how, how Kingsley, how would you feel about a video pitch deck? Do you, does that work for you? Would that work for you? Or would you want uh, the live uh, presentation? Or would, would you would accept a video would pitch deck? With would, would, would would the present pandemic, a video pitch deck is very good. Uh, if, it's, if it is well presented, it is accepted. Even uh, a format is accepted because we don't have the opportunity to meet one by one. Uh, I, only, uh, I only feel sorry for uh, manufacturing companies or founders of uh, of things that you make because they don't have they don't actually have the that uh, audience to invest or touch of showing how it really works. If you see it in a video, it's okay, but showing to him in person, get him really attached to it. But you have to do a very good job with your video pitch deck if you are in that uh, angle of business to make sure that you captivate the uh, investor's uh, attention. All right, thanks. Thank you, Kingsley. Noah, over to you. Uh, you were on mute. Well, then I guess you missed the most interesting thing I had to say. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, with the growth of interest in private uh, capital and everyone thinking that entrepreneur, um, it becomes increasingly difficult to differentiate yourself. So the question about a pitch deck or a video pitch deck is really just, uh, you know, wrapping around the broader question of how do you get noticed and how do you communicate to somebody in a way that's interesting to them. Now, what Kingsley was saying was really critical about everyone's attention span is unbelievably stretched and limited. And if you're not able to communicate to me extremely quickly why you're interesting and why you're the right person for the right opportunity, it makes me ask questions about how you're going to be successful from a commercial standpoint pitching to clients. So really the wrapping can be as important to the message, but at the same time, without a clear, crisp message about why this idea is very interesting at this moment in time and why you're the right person to be in charge of it, speaking to the right person, um, you're not going to be successful. So I hope that, uh, can provide some value to people who are considering uh, how to prepare themselves for asking other people to support their vision. Thank you. That was indeed a great help, Noah. Gary, over to you. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, you know, we keep it, uh, I'm a farm boy, as I, I've said many times from Pennsylvania. And a good friend of mine, Guy Kawasaki, has some rules. So, you know, depending on your situation, of course, Kingsley was right on target. If you only have a limited amount of time, one of the things you got to ask when you're doing your pitch is how much time do you have? But really, the, the, the basics 
from my perspective, with 10 slides, 20 minutes, and 30-point font. And if you look at your deck, you know, your deck is, you, from the title, it's about enchanting the audience. So you got to remember that. Your goal is to enchant. The purpose of the deck is to stimulate interest in your company. It's not to overwhelm them with so much information they get confused. So, you know, you look at it from the beginning in your title. It's about the enchantment. Your team, you know, what is your problem or opportunity? What is your value, your value proposition? What kind of magic? Do you have incredible magic? And how do you present that? Your business model. It's so as you go down through it, you're building credibility. You're making it interesting. You're, you're, it's like going fishing, right? You want to make sure you've got uh, the right kind of bait in there. You're the right place to fish. You got your competitive analysis management team. And it's a lot of acting. So one of the things that you have to do, I remember I did a TED, uh, a TED presentation, one of the TEDx's to a rather large audience one time. And so going down through those decks, 18 minutes you have to speak at a TED talk, exactly 18. And so one of the things you have to do is you have to look at how do you paint the picture with words that make it so exciting and so compelling? So one of the things for startups, uh, um, Pascal, is that you can go down through and, you know, if you have revenue, that catches, if you're a VC, if you're an investor, that catches their attention, revenue. If you've had multiple... Uh, startups and you've been successful, it catches their attention. And I've been through, you know, we had, uh, I guess, 4,000 startups through my uh, accelerator that I started in Russia. Wow. So I've seen thousands of decks, actually, and thousands of competitions, hundreds of competitions, thousands of decks. So I would go down through. So from my standpoint, it's about enchanting. You know, Guy Kawasaki has a book. Um, one is uh, The Art of the Pitch. So I would take a look at that book. It's really, really good book. Um, I did a, a recent, um, I did a recent uh, podcast with him. I mean, if you get a chance, yeah, check out that podcast. But it's enchanting, and the whole goal is, you know, Kingsley's right on target. A lot of times, people forget what that. They don't ask you for the money. Yeah, <laughs> the whole idea is to get the money, right? It's like yeah. you got to ask, and then you got to probe. How does that sound? You know, what do you think? You got to ask these kind of questions. It's, you know, this is sales one-on-one and you got to follow up. What's, what are the next steps? How do you get a hold of them? Most of the time partners have meetings on Mondays and they'll come back with some type of feedback uh, shortly after that. So how do you follow up? Remember VCs many times do not say no, they just stole because they don't want to miss out on an opportunity that may happen, you know, six months from now, a year from now. Hmm. Very good points. Thank you, Gary. Thank you so much. Uh, Hush, again, how to structure your pitch deck, types of pitch deck, do's and don'ts. I think uh, Kingsley, Gary, Noah have covered it most and uh, Vandana as well. I would like to add. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so uh, the pitch deck concept has been extensively covered already, already right? So I will cover the prelude to the pitch deck. So obviously, the pitch deck needs to be very concise and very intriguing kind of attract investor attention, right? But how do you even reach that level where an investor even considers you to even discuss with you for the pitch deck, right? So there needs to be a lot of preparation done before that as well. So I get like, you know, hundreds of uh, messages every month, you know, yeah. startups looking for fundraising and all that stuff. So right from the beginning, before I give them the opportunity to pitch to me, you know, for the fundraise, first I would require from them an elevator pitch. An elevator pitch would essentially mean, you know, like seven to eight word, small description about your business which kind of gives, gives me a small glimpse of whether, you know, uh, is it worth taking forward or not. Once we have that, then it, it, it's like a small uh, two, three line description to kind of understand a bit more better, with bit more descriptive to understand if that is there. And if I, I'm interested enough, if there is curiosity, which is enough created, then we figure out, you know, like a, a proper uh, 15 minute, 20 minute presentation with the startup because uh, just, you know, giving out 15, 20 minutes of time for every startup which comes for the investment, it's not feasible, right? There are only so many hours in a day and you do the math, like 100, uh, 100 pitches in a month and doing 20 minutes for each of them becomes like 2,000 minutes. It doesn't 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 justify the time value of it. So this is how we kind of screen it, you know, the whether we should be able to, you know, take the startups or not for the pitching, right? So this is how it is required. And each step along the way, the idea is to, you know, go one step forward. 
so the elevator pitch is to you know, uh, get me the curiosity you there hush hello i think we have lost him devang over to you while hush is back um so yeah i think elevator pitch uh, before uh, the pitch um yeah can you hear me now can you hear me now we lost you in the screen and your connectivity was a little weak as well yeah I think. yeah the connectivity is a little weak but uh, thankfully i'm back now yeah yeah sure um, so, as a, so as i was saying you know once the pitch deck is done even the pitch deck has to be you know for 10 15 minutes at max not more than that because some startups you know just go on and on for 30 minutes etc doesn't make sense because the idea of the pitch deck is to create more interest towards another detailed deep dive for which runs about an hour after the pitch deck presentation that's why uh, a founder needs to understand you know it's like a step by step process right so it's just like you know you're dating with a vc just like you're dating with a girl outside you don't you don't ask her for a marriage or a date in the first meeting right you have to go step by step you first you know lure her you kind of entice her towards you know participating with you i may not be using the right words right now but i i'm hoping you get the right idea yeah i like that lure her <laughs> Yeah, right. I'm hoping you get the right idea. Predator. I'm hoping you get the right idea. I think you're going to be quoted for a long time. Though. Hey, Ash, as long as you're not using candy or something, it's okay. Uh, I think I think it's a good thing you guys stopped me right now before I you know embarrass myself any further. Maybe like a Ferrari, half huh? harsh. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> Essen. Essentially, the idea is it's like a courtship right, right, process. Right. <laughs> it's like a courtship process. That's all I would like to say to kind of keep it as concise as possible. Wow. Okay. Great. Great analogy coming out from dating a girl to doing a pitch deck before presenting a pitch deck before a VC. Thank you, Harsh, for making for sharing and making us laugh as well. <laughs> Devan, would you like to share something? <laughs> <laughs> no thank you thank you for that uh, for livening it up harsh so anyways <laughs> oh my god i i think vandana actually went offline she needs to recover from that <laughs> uh, really so, uh, she she's laughing so much I, she went offline she went offline she she must have uh, anyways oh she's back okay good you you were worried vandana for a minute anyways <laughs> um, so i think everyone's covered this deck you know quite a bit all the way from a definitional or textbook standpoint what it is so i'll just i'll answer it the question in a different way i think uh, to gary i mean gary even went to the font size so that's wonderful i think what it is is the pitch deck is your way to get a first meeting okay just look at it that way i mean you know summarize what everyone has said here of course it's it's a deck and it's ppt and all that that's that's the you know canonical definition of it it's your way to get a first meeting if you get a first meeting you wrote a good pitch deck right in addition to what you're doing and all that uh, so by exclusion you know uh, and we see this all the time even in today's day and age i'm surprised that with all the stuff on the internet why certain pitch decks are badly written but don't don't write 500 words on each slide don't talk about necessarily how you grew up in a small town with no electricity and how you made it you know all that is inspiring and all that is good you know but don't don't talk about you know your founding team over three slides and how you're the best of friends and all that again it's a good thing to have affinity with your teammates but don't write you know stuff that will will bore people you know as a couple of people said in a world of short attention spans right don't start writing five slides on your technology which no one understands like quadratic equations or integral fractions or something like that you know i mean just just keep it simple as i said you know it should your your deck should be able to be understood by 90% of the world's population like you know like you said your your grandmother or your grandmom your granddad should should at least be able to talk about after reading the deck as to what you do and how you make money what what is your tech who is in your team why you are the best to do it and basics like simple basic english on what you are doing why you are doing and why you are the best people to do it and how much money you are raising and what will you do with that money okay just simple really it's not difficult this this 500 pages 500 templates on the internet to do this so you know just do that much and that's all i'll say it's simple keep it yeah. simple <laughs> 
Keep it simple. Yeah, sorry, I wanted to say that as well. Thank you, Devang. Let's let's have a look at a live pitch deck. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, Pascal, let's have a look at your pitch deck. We can all stop, uh, Pascal, and ask questions on the way. Okay. Okay, so Sonny, do you want me to pitch or just show the pitch deck, or what's the well, how how would you want it made to go about it? So, what's the goal of today's presentation, Pascal? Yeah, the goal is as we have learned, I need to ask for the money. Show me the money. No, just joking around. Um, yeah, so basically, I'm going to ask for the for the money to make my vision real, right? So, Coinless is supposed to become the Bloomberg for crypto. And actually, it's the people's Bloomberg for crypto. I don't want to keep it just for the elite. I want to make it accessible, so to protect the small people. Uh, but also, I make it, uh, of course, with different price available for institutionals. And in order to make this dream, have, it, have this dream executed, I need funding to support the growth and also the, the basically the development. Um, AI and information and data is quite expensive, especially if you want to speed and the access to the data. It costs money. And so that is, uh, I'm a little bit, you know, that, that's where, why I kind of need the funding to, you know, fund that growth development and hopefully, and the, hopefully the, 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 the growth that supports then the continuous you know, development as well so that we become self-sufficient and profitable. So just that beginning is that what you need, what I need right now. And of course, um, and with the investor, I'm also, also hoping that the investors will be able to open up doors or help in the growth because I mean growing also needs guidance especially scalability and stuff I mean all that kind of you know, resources I think that's another challenge for itself I so Gary I already downloaded uh, the the art of the pitch or the, the um, yeah and uh, but I, the first book the next other book that I got yeah the art of the pitch I just got uh, downloaded it we'll see listen to it afterwards but scaling up is the next this is what I got down was the next concern for me so anyways, so here with this pitch, I hope to get you excited about the Bloomberg for Crypto, explaining to you why this is so exciting, how I'm doing this. I show you the vision where I want to go to. And in the end, I'm going to ask for the money. That's the idea for the pitch awesome. deck. So please, uh, judges, uh, since we are judging uh, Pascal today, not Pascal, but his presentation, please free to ask your questions on the way. Thank you. Pascal, over to you. Oh, you want me to start now? Yes, I'm, please. I'm a I'm, a, I'm sorry, I'm a bit confused, <laughs> but you don't mind me, Sony. Thanks a lot for your patience, by the way. No and um, all right, so Coinalyst Frankfurt, we are based in Frankfurt. I purposely made the company under German law just because a CEO under German law is privately liable. That means I'm losing all my, my wealth, everything, if I do anything wrong. And actually, the address is all transparent. So the police and everybody in the, in the register thing, people will know if you look where the company is, you know, I'm not just a mailbox. You see where I am and because it's all registered in Germany. And as a, as a CEO of the German company, like I said, I'm, if I do anything beyond that corporation, I'm personally liable. That was important to me because I wanted to show trust because this crypto market is, in a, in a, is based on a fantastic idea that's going to revolutionize the world. But unfortunately, it's been drawing a lot of evil. I'm I've never seen so many fraud artists and, and scammers in my life before. I was very sheltered. I couldn't believe how people impose with my personnel, like, you know, taking my picture, asking people for money and robbing them. I mean, that criminal energy, never seen that before. So that was my motivation to build Coinalist on trust under German law, uh, not uh, trying to save money on taxes because money is a secondary aspect for me. I don't care if I have to pay a little bit more taxes, if I have something that I can build and, and provide trust to the people. So um, the key thing is coin and let's bring, uh, you know, what does it do? In crypto, we don't have the fundamentals and price earnings as we are used to with stocks. Due to this, it is even more important to monitor the, the chatter, this, the rumors and the sentiment of those projects and if they are you know, becoming more popular or adopted or not. It, it just has a much bigger significance in, in your fundamentals, right? And I made my first million actually in the dot-com. So, so you can see I'm not the youngest uh, anymore because I passed the dot-com. And actually, I lost my first million too. So I know the bittersweet symphony <laughs> um, very much personally. 
but it's also a good thing because I learned early that I can make money. I can lose it, but I can make it again. So I would never kill myself just if you lose your money. Just do it again. It takes sometimes a little bit longer, but you can make money if you just work hard and you know be creative. So the problem that I've identified is in the market. This is actually by being with my friends in the German. And actually in Frankfurt, we don't eat, we don't drink beer as much. We drink apple wine. So we go in an apple wine pub. And uh, my friends were telling me in 2017 how they were making money, which was exciting, right? It's like now, right? Everybody made money now. And now, then they, but then they told me the problems because it took too much time to research all those projects. Even now, if you were trying to find the next cool DeFi that will give you a nice liquidity pool in return, there's a lot of work in getting into this. Jesus, and NFTs, like, it's a lot of work. So that is time consuming. Number two, all my friends are millennials. I'm a little bit the older guy there because I'm 45, right? So just to share that secret. Okay, so my millennial buddies, they never traded a stock in their life before. So they, gave, they, they came into crypto from zero to 100, like doing nothing and then doing trading crypto and investing in crypto. So, and that's like the wild, wild west, nothing regulated. People can run off with your money. You know, it's, it's pretty scary stuff. So that was the second problem. So they could not relax uh, anymore because uh, they were anxious. Even when they woke up at nighttime, they had to look at their phone, looking how the uh, how's, how their stock uh, currency is doing. So that was an issue. They could not res uh, re relax anymore. They they took they spent too much time researching. And the third thing is, once they made money with Bitcoin, they wanted to go in into altcoins. And that's when they got scared about you know you have these famous stories, one coin, Bitconnect plus token, all those scams. So they're kind of scared to get into a scam. So, and that was my point when I said, guys, I do 10 years now, big data AI, I'll help you. I, I'll solve the problem. It was a joke in the pub. And then I looked at the market and said, this is big. I, I got some friends together we, and we founded CoinList to solve the problem. So this is exact, exactly what we're doing. So cryptocurrencies research, there's too much noise, lack of quality data. Also, you need to know the market sentiment on a macro level and the integrity of the information is very important. So this is a little bit the challenge. We as an AI based big data analytics platform um, are doing exactly that. You know, Bloomberg in the 80s provided information to stock traders. They give them an information advantage, sometimes even information faster than the other traders. And in, in the 2.0 world of being a Bloomberg, we don't have that exclusive content of an editor that's going to give it to me earlier than the others. So you've got to be faster in analyzing and catching all data and analyzing the data, trying to give you insights out of the data that's outside. That is how I'm able to give you value. If you do it manually, you're lost. You need tools that help you, you know, process the data that help you get you quickly to the key information and that's what we are doing with uh, with our technology we are collecting all the news worldwide right now in english for crypto and in german right now and then we're going to expand it to chinese japanese and all the key markets that are relevant in the crypto space right um so so this is uh, this is what we're doing so we're analyzing the news but we're also analyzing the, the, the bus, the, the, the noise, the chatter, the rumors, meaning we are collecting the data of telegram groups, um, all the you know, comments on YouTube, Twitter, etc. right? You name it, the data, we, you know, we analyze it. Um, and, and basically that explains a little bit the architecture that we're built on. We're using, you know, we have our own crawlers, so we crawl our own data. We have a big index already, over a billion of documents. We use natural language processing to analyze the language and, uh, you know, basically machine learning to do pattern recognition, to improve our classification of the data and stuff. Try to do even, we're the first to build like a, a fake news detector, right? Mm -hmm. It's an AI that actually needs a lot of training. So bear with me, it's an alpha. It will give you at least an insight mm -hmm. already. If you have an article from The Onion, you know, in the US, The Onion is a satire site. <laughs> And if they will say whatever, something crazy, um, you will have a flag where it says fake news based on humor, right? So at least some people don't fall for that. <laughs> but at least, anyways, the fake news detector is a start. It will need a lot of training, the model. Uh, we're the first to introduce a scam detector, um, which is just on statistics, not using AI. It's, it's thresholds and statistical method. 
we if we, we normalize let's say day one a new a new coin there's always some people that are going to talk negative about the coin so you normalize it and then you compare it to the next week and if we have 20 percent more people saying specific terms that are related to scam fraud artist you know uh, nothing behind it then you get a scam alert and if you get three weeks in a row a scam alert from us because it's breaking a threshold then you might want to reconsider your investment so these are the little things that we have done that nobody has just because I really care that the small people get protected. Because number one, with my information that I'm bringing in and the transparency, I put in the light to the darkness. With this, I help protect you the money because I don't want the small people to protect, first of all, their money. <laughs> and some, secondly, make smarter decisions and, hope, and based on that, make more money. But this is the philosophy that we are behind uh, in, uh, with coin analysts. And, as we've been founded in 2018, February, and we went through two hard crypto winters and we survived, we're really tough on the one side because we survived. But on the other hand, we've been very productive. And so we came up with a lot of already a couple products in our suite. Our flagship is our insights product, which is our big data architecture tool. But we built other solutions in the meantime as well. So we've released a crypto market newsletter. Um, we've come up, we have an API that we provide as a data stream for exchanges of say, if they want to have news feeds um, of, you know, most relevant news sites, we can feed them with that and just pay us a certain fixed fee and we'll, we'll become your data feed provider. We've come up uh, through wide labeling. We've added our ecosystem with an, a messenger, um, which is, decentralized to make sure that you are able to communicate your most valuable information to your closest peers. But in the nowadays world, it, you know, in order to support your projects that are altcoins, if you believe in it and you found a good project, let's say like CoinList, and it's a small company, you know, and you need to, and you invested in it with your coins, then you should help it as well. And so we, we've come up and built, created the first social media engagement tool for the crypto space, where we also have Telegram included and, and, and key channels that are important for the crypto space. So you write a post, you share a post from, from CoinAnalyst that is a news article that is relevant and then just put it, in, put it in and press a button and you can share it to all your channels in one click. So you support, you have it in all your Telegram groups, in Twitter, in, in YouTube if you want, in LinkedIn, uh, Facebook fan page and you can share all your with your peers directly all the information that's the engagement tool I thought that basically when I did my first million that's how I made my million because I shared my good research and then I had got a following and you know and, and my, my stuff also grew because of that because people also got excited about the good targets that I had found at the time anyways this is 2.0 um, so uh, you know the Bloomberg here we call the Connets insights we, we, with the money that we want, we will get right now, we have a version 1.0 ready. Version 1.0 is, however, not this, what I have, right? The vision of this is to get a terminal look and feel. So this is where we will need a next step of funding. Right now we have a version ready, which is 1.0. You can have it, you can try it, um, but uh, it is not yet a terminal. For the terminal, we need other specialist, specialized developers that are specialized in building terminals but as we want the terminal to be our user interface and our in fundamental data in the charts because that is what we've learned now by being in the market from our users that this is right now uh, really what we really need to do in order to really hit the market strongly so that's so we have a basically a proof of concept working product um and the vision is here in the screen where we need to go but this is the thing that people are willing to spend the money 20 bucks or whatever, or 100 bucks per month in retail or 1,500 in the institutional side. But what we need to do is build like a terminal look like a product where you have all the information in our fundamental sentiment integrated so you can make better, uh, you know, decisions. So you can, you, here's just quickly summarize what we're doing. Sentiment analysis, ex extensive charting, we'll have intelligent alert systems, we build up alert systems even based on sentiment and bus so that you will be informed if there's 20 percent more activity on your coin compared to last day last week last month um, this is kind of cool because it gives you peace of mind um, having that not just on a price but you see on the movements or popular you know something happening um, we've come up with a product because in our team we have good traders 
that help build the product because they they're passionately part of the team uh, as they believe they, they love the project but they are chart uh, experts like in chart trading so we combine the chart trading know-how and in our fundamentals and they created we created a trading strategy that is um, the most conservative trading strategy that we can build with the maximum profit that we were able to come up with and this trading strategy has a, a four-year track record on a back test of making 50 percent roughly per year in crypto which is for crypto hardcore traders it's like boring but for the normal person when if i can tell you that in four years the maximum drawdown was 10 percent actually 8.9 i we even rounded it up that means your money in four years last four years would have been in risk only 10 percent because try to have a drawdown of 80 percent and get back to let's say if you have 80 10 000, you get down to 2000 good luck coming back to 10,000. But if you have 10,000, you lose maximum 1,000 in the worst months. And then you still make 50% after 12 months in four years, at least last in the history. I mean, that's a good trading strategy to work with if, you don't, if, you, if you're not allowed to lose your money, if you cannot afford losing your money. Um, at least for crypto, we try to come up with something for the people. And this trading strategy is getting very good traction. We started in the beginning of the year, we made 400,000 euros uh, you know, in the first quarter. Um, this is the, this has been a great success, and we uh, we are also the first German um, certified from the German SEC crypto copy trading company in Germany that is selling a copy trading crypto solution. It was a a, pro a side product of our main product, but it's bringing in revenue. And you guys said you like to hear revenue. Well, this is where I bring revenues already. So that's one thing. Um, so and this is my engagement tool. Um, I believe with the insights tool, this is going to be a nice upside product that we have, uh, you know, for everybody that gets serious to then, you know, also subscribe um, to this tool. Um, both products are software as a service products, so it's nice and scalable. I will get right to the financials. In the Eurozone, we'll charge euros. In the, in outside the Eurozone, it will be dollars or we will adapt. Think global, act local, of course. Um, and adapted also to the certain markets. The goal here is uh, we want to start with 20 bucks as a retail to be accessible, I mean, uh, for the normal people and 100 bucks, but also having an institutional play with much more analysis, deeper analysis of the data where we get more closer, like, you know, to up to 1,500 bucks for a subscription, right? Um, that's where we want to go to. The funding is still needed to build the institutional version to make it finish. The back end is the same. It's going to be the same. It's just the user interface is different. Um, and to, to do the terminal, uh, the goal is to, um, uh, by the way, okay, one second, uh, is to have, I mean, 4,000 users by the end of the year. If we would have 10,000, you would be already making 2.4 million. But by the end of 2021, we would like to have uh, 4,000 paying customers. Um, to get to our financials. So let me just go here into the financials and I get back to the roadmap. So you, you can see I'm trying to be very conservative. I'm already having 400,000 by till now um, in, in revenues. And our goal by the end of the year is to get to 900,000. And I'm very conservative with my numbers. It means I, I always try to do, be profitable. I mean, I know my American friends don't think always like that. Uh, it doesn't have to be profitable because they ask me why you try to be profitable. Because that's, I'm just made like that. <laughs> I sleep better if I know I'm profitable. Nobody can take away my business as long as I'm profitable, right? Um, so this is my numbers are very conservative, but I need the funding later on also, not just for the basic, but also for the growth. Because in 2022, I'm trying to grow aggressively, right? So. The first year, I'm, I'm easy to get it. I'm pretty confident we're going to get it. But the 3.74 million, that requires serious money also in, in, the, in the growth, in marketing, performance marketing to get us positioned. Um, we have a B2B strategy as well to work with exchanges and help uh, so that they sh uh, offer our product to their customers as a revenue share model. So if we win exchanges and if you guys have contacts to exchange, that is what we like. I know it's very tough to get to the right decision makers at the exchanges. But once you get an exchange, it's a beautiful multiplier to get to their customers and do a revenue share with them, right? And you have reoccurring revenue also for the exchange and for yourself. Anyways, this is the growth plan that we have. It's quite aggressive. 
in the second or third year. First year, I, I'm thinking we'll be able to get it easy. The other years, we'll need the funding and the growth of the team to get to those numbers. Where we at on the roadmap? Um, this is here. You can see we started our we launched in our 1.0 in the beginning of the year, um, and that 1.0 version. We already positioned it and offered it with Family Office Insights. Family Office Insights is an U.S. association for all the family offices in North America and in the world. They have 5,000 members. They want to offer, they, they signed up a white label agreement with us and want to offer it to the family offices. Very interesting is uh, the CEO of Family Office Insights told me that the family offices right now are considering to position 2% of their wealth into crypto which is exciting. That's just, that means 2% of that wealth is coming to the crypto space step by step. And if they have, if not, they have, if they have not already come in, they will come in. Um, so 1.0 is finished. You guys will see that we are able to, you know, not just talk, but walk the talk by having the product. It's like a Volkswagen Jetta that I have in for German terms. The Mercedes S-Class is where I want to be and that's where I want to grow to, right? So I have a base, a functional, good car, robust, but a Mercedes S-Class is where I need to be, right? This is where I want to grow to. I have the copy trading, which is unique. We're the f first to do this in Germany. I'm BaFin approved, which is the German SEC. Um, and that took us a lot of money and uh, time and working with this. I have police records uh, reported. I'm under, so, so, uh, under their surveillance. So basically we have to do reports. I mean, this is pretty unique, right? And uh, due to this, we can get a whole different access to the market and the different trust level that we have due to that. Um, so that's uh, that's our launch also of the Socializer Messenger and engagement tool. And then the highlight here is we want to go public because we are an honest trade company. We can go, you know, we can follow all the compliance rules. So we're going to go uh, uh, IPO in Canada to raise the money for the growth and get also more exposure than to the institutionals and have a different standing. So we're planning to be public by the end of July. Uh, Noah, by the way, I have a good uh, Jewish Canadian friend that is managing me here, Aaron. And if, if he, uh, so we're in good hands and he's, uh, he's, he's pushing us. And um, anyway, so uh, IPO is, is planned in Canada. I'm excited. I mean, I did my degree there and Canada seems to be the right uh, market for m not the mainstream kind of uh, products or topics like they did CPD and right now if you look at Voyager they did an exciting story in Canada they grew from 20 cents to 35 US uh, 35 Canadian dollars uh, short, uh, have a look at Voyager or look at BIGG and uh, I think we're gonna have a nice growth there we're gonna start with 20 cents and I have a special offering here pre IPO for the investors that want to, if they want to come in and anyway so and we have a coin as well so there's a two bites on the apple basically opportunity here because the coin is going to correlate with the stock. Um, and then October, uh, we're going to go out with our insights mobile version. We're trying to have a little app uh, version for the mainstream. And then by the end of December, we would like to have the terminal launched. So this is a little bit the roadmap and uh, here the cost structure just for your review again, uh, that you can see one second. So this is the forecast remember. Here's the cost structure uh, where we at cost wise. Um, this year, like I said, try to be profitable, 700,000. And then up with the growth, we're going to expand, of course, with the growth, also the team. Um, this is just a little bit of cost structure here, a little bit about the team. Um, Andrew Zazama is our, our COO. He was a stockbroker, serial entrepreneur. He's born in 1969. He's a seasoned guy. And uh, so he's the CEO of the company. Tobias is a co-founder of mine. He was, he's a computer scientist specialized in security and uh, he, he actually was the initial uh, spark for the idea and then until I got to the pub and then was the finalization of the deal. Um, Martin is our product manager and day one uh, UX and marketing manager guy in our team. Uh, we have 11 people right now in the team and I'd like to highlight Andreas De Paulos. Andreas De Paulos is out of New York. Uh, he was my ex-boss. I grew his company from 40 to 200 people. He was my first investor. Um, in, in the company and basically he did the biggest IPO in 1996 uh, with Computron 800 million in, in New York, Nasdaq and now he has another, he's currently the CEO of um, Petra Acquisition and Petra Acquisition is a SPAC, he raised 80 million and he's right now 
about to buy a $2 billion company. I'm very excited to have him on the board because he's going to be our advisor in all that legal stuff in the IPO world and the connection to the US side of things. You know, what I want to highlight is with this opportunity here um, is that I, I'm a person that is, comes from Germany, has been in Canada, have lived in Taiwan. I understand the importance of Asia. I'm going to focus actually the growth in Asia. Uh, the US and North America is definitely important and that's why I have the CEO there as well. But I understand, uh, you know, the global dynamic. I mean, crypto is a global play. We got to think global here. And um, yeah, and I think we have an exciting opportunity with Coinalyst to really build something to become a Bloomberg 2.0 for crypto. That's it, guys. I hope it was okay. And feel free to, you know, tell me all the constructive criticism. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pascal, for taking time um, uh, to explain and present. Over to uh, Douglas for the feedback and questions. Yeah, so, Pascal, I like what you have, but it seemed to be a little bit, you know, in different directions. And, um, you know, I've done a lot of pitches. I would, you know, you need to stay focused. You need to stay powerful. You need to not, um, I don't want to say ramble, but, you know, bring in too many other. Um, sure. You need to stay right to the point. If it was me and your presentation, I would talk, I would start out with, listen, we're, we're, we're making money. We're already uh, making revenue because it sets the stage, you know, for the rest of the presentation. And, of course, you're a serial entrepreneur. You built several companies. You want to talk about that. And then what happens is the rest of your presentation becomes believable. But just for me, it was a little bit, it was a bit too long. I like what you have. I like the fact that, um, you know, you're, you're doing this, um, you know, scam detection. Uh, it's interesting because there are a lot of challenges out there. But I would focus not on the negative part, but really the positive, how you can make a difference and what that means uh, to folks. So I would go down through. There's another... Um, uh, actually, Guy Kawasaki's partner is um, a guy named Bill Riker. And um, I would read his book, uh, Getting the Wow, because it's really important to, you know, in, uh, like I said, enchant uh, folks. So, What's his yeah. name? What's the name of the book? It's called uh, Getting to Wow. It just was released two months ago. If you want, you can you can Google my name and Bill Riker, and you'll see he was on my show, and he was talking about his book. and. And they'll give you some highlights. You got, but you got something really. The, the meat is right, but what we want to do is trim the fat. I appreciate it. I do need to trim the fat all over. <laughs> well, you know, that's part of that's part of going down through it. If you're going to create a billion dollar company, these are the kind of steps that you got to go through in order to do it. So you've got. Uh, it seems like you've got the right team. It seems you're at the right market at the right time, but you just you know trim it. All right, Gary. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you for your feedback. Um, so next, I have Noah. Hi, Pascal. Thank you for bringing it back to a personal level. I think it's a very important part of the conversation is that it actually is a conversation, and you've integrated elements of the person who you're speaking to so that it's particularly relevant to them. Uh, one part I didn't feel particularly strong about is where you fit in the competitive landscape. Um, I am an active user of Voyager. Um, I like that you brought them up, but not in the context of why I would go and use you as opposed to someone else. So someone who's actively looking for this type of solution on an individual level, like why, why are you blowing people out of the water? Now, I understand it's still just an alpha, um, but again, for someone who doesn't necessarily have the context, providing that could be extremely valuable. And again, not to rehash anything, Gary said, but um, snappier to the point, less depth. Let me ask the questions so that I'm more engaged rather than you just dumping on me massive amounts of information. Okay. Uh, that's the art, actually. Not that easy to pitch it right enough that you guys ask me the questions, but okay. All right. Sounds well, good. That's Appreciate part of it is that effectively you're facilitating a conversation where you 
lead me to ask the questions that you know I should be asking so that you have amazing responses so that not only do we have, again, rapport, but also you demonstrate mastery of the subject. Mm. Okay, I'm going to reflect to that, how to do this. But it's good. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Nova. Thank you so much for your feedback. Kingsley, over to you. Uh, thank you for a nice presentation. Uh, the start was very good. I must tell you, you first of all told us about your uh, your company, why it's registered in Germany, uh, which you tell about, about the credibility part of it, how credible your integrity. Uh, that, was an, that, that was a good opening because it's registered in Germany. You are governed by the German law. You are liable to, the, to what is going to happen if the company fails. But yeah. you kind of dribble away from there and went negative positive. It should be positive yeah. positive. There is no need to talk about there are bad cryptos out there. There is this. Yeah, we already know that. Right? What you're sure. going to tell us is why yours is not a bad one. You know, mm -hmm. and then you started this company in 2018, if I'm correct, right? Yeah, February. February 2018. This was a time a time for boom for, for ICO. ICO was getting a lot of money. Now, uh, you have not told us how much you raised at that time and how much you have used up to this time and how much is left of that money. Then how much are you looking for now in total? Uh, uh, yeah. you've, you've, you've told us the stages you want to go at the IP world, the coin. You've not told us, okay, how much of the token are you is your team going to be holding you have 11 members how much of that token is, are, are they going to be holding back so if you need for example one million dollars for example at what stages do you need one this me one million dollar do you need two hundred thousand are you looking for two hundred thousand dollars right now and then are you going to look for under three hundred thousand after three months we, we, we have to know the stages that you are going with that mm -hmm. then uh, you, you showed us your your, 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 your record uh I, I made notes. Okay, uh, you talk about protecting people's money, which is very good. It's a, it's a good concept. Uh, but we need, we need more information about how do you want to protect uh, people's money. Uh, you talk about using uh, euro and using uh, dollar in outside of uh, outside of the eurozone, uh, which is also good. But uh, at the same time, uh, you made you made a comment that we actually make. Uh, people in america not to invest in your business i'm just telling the truth i'm, I'm, I'm being honest right here uh uh it was a very simple simple statement but it was also negative to the investors over there uh they don't like you you like to make profit from the beginning they think differently no we, we don't want to know how they think we want to involve everybody you know we want to involve everybody so yeah, that is one point you should avoid then the, the, the trading part yes you're going to be doing traders you're going to be uh doing the uh, uh, fake news going against fake news which is good uh, your b2b revenue exchange is a, is a good idea uh you want to do an ipo at what stage if you are saying july are you saying july this year which is two months away or are you saying july what year uh okay, this year this year, this year. Uh, for me i i think that is uh a jump a, a big leap for somebody who is still looking for, for funding right now, uh, it's a good dream, but I don't think it's possible this year because when you look at the mathematics and you look at the conditions of what is going on, you are still looking for the money. It's June next month, it's July, uh, a month after. So I don't think that is possible. Uh, you're gonna tell us what is possible. What do you really need right now? You need this money right now for this project. Then the second part of the project is this. I will need this amount of money. Then after that is done, okay, the tokens are sold out. Of course, you have a good track record you're already making money. You made you made uh, three hundred thousand or seven hundred thousand dollars if I if, uh, seven hundred thousand euro if, if I get you correctly. Uh, four hundred yeah. four thousand euros. How much? Four hundred thousand euros revenue. Four hundred thousand revenue, right? So you already have a growing a, a great capital. You want to scale up that to seven hundred thousand uh, by the end of the year, which is good. But we need to know how much of that money goes back into the business, because when we are investing in business. We want you to also reinvest into the business. I like I like your charisma. I like your passion that you use to explain it because it's like your own baby. You have to be able to explain your project. You did very well with that. Uh, like Gary said, you kind of wavered away from, from it. Uh, we did talk about, uh, before we started, uh, I think it was Mr. Diva. 
uh, they talk about uh, forget about the friendship team, the, the bar team, the drinking team. You still went into that a little bit, so you, you didn't take you didn't take that advice seriously, which is very important advice. So and uh, time, time you, you used a lot of time, which is okay for your project. is really okay, but at the end, you didn't tell us how much you want. You didn't tell us how much how you want to use that money, how we can support you, and why we should support you. I mean that should be your closing demand. I'm looking for a hundred million dollars, and it's going to be used in these stages. And if, if you invest this money. What is my exit strategy? I'm going to get this money back at, in six months' time. You already have a revenue, so we start paying back dividends or paying back money in, in, a, in a year time. We need to look for this piece. But all in all, you did well. Thank you very much. Thank wow. you, okay. Chris. Kingsley, Thank thanks you. a lot. A lot of, lot of points. A lot of points. I, I, I read it and I listened to you speak. So it's good. Thank you. Uh, Devon, please. Yeah, I, I'll be quick. I think that today is the day when. Uh, you know, I come in late, so all the all the points have been covered. So uh, I, I I think it went well. Uh, I, I'll echo a couple of the points that I thought were relevant. I think I thought it was a bit verbose, Pascal. It could have been made more crisp. Um, okay. More, too, too much um, words. Too Let's, many words. Uh, you yeah. know, you need some sizzle with the steak. You know, you know, it was a lot of steak and less sizzle. So you need some more sizzle, more verbose to the point. How much are you raising? Use of proceeds you know, competition, you know, just more uh, more investor speak, I thought, was needed a little bit more. I, I like the candor a lot, the fact that you are in Germany and your personal address and you're putting everything in the line, I think that was a bit different. I mean, maybe it's needed from a regulatory standpoint, but to bring it up up front is the first time I've seen it and someone to say, you know, my skin is on the line, they know where I live, they know my bank account, they know everything. And I'm sticking out for everyone. I thought that was really powerful. And uh, I mean, we're not into crypto investing. There's all kinds of regulations in India around crypto. But having said that, I think it went well. Thanks. Thank really you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Devan, for uh, judging the presentation itself, even though you're not investing into crypto projects. I really appreciate that. Uh, Bandana, over to you. Um, yeah, hi, Pastor. Your, um, Pitch deck was very nice, uh, but it was just a bit lengthy. And you, you could make it more numeric than, uh, uh, you know, more texty. It would look nice and better. And I like that you're making revenues in this platform. Very few people are able to make uh, these kind of revenues. So I appreciate that. Uh, and uh, wish you good luck. Uh, though I would not be picking up this deal, but wish you good luck for your fundraise. No problem. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for your feedback uh, to Pascal. Uh, I think we are con I'm just uh, uh, conscious at the time. It was a great panel. Everybody enjoyed. I can see that, but people had to drop off because of uh, the time constraint. Let's take some quick closing remarks. Gary, over to you. Yeah. So no, it's great. This is um, a great time for startups. A great time for you to come out. Make sure that you use the this digital transformation and all these online resources to get your word out. Make sure you write and present and, and get involved uh, online because still the pandemic is not uh, over yet. It's slowing down in some places, picking up in others, but it'll be able to get to a wide, wide audience. So my name is Gary Fowley. You can reach me on LinkedIn. You can uh, check me out on Twitter to hear from you. Get out there, get them, and move forward and stay positive. Thank you, Kingsley. Yeah, thank you, Sonny, for having me again. And uh, I want to thank uh, Pascal for his uh, pitch. Uh, I just want to make something very, very clear. We are, not, we are not here to judge you. We are here to support you. We are here to uh, exchange ideas with you. Uh, also learn from you and uh, give, you an ad give you advice, which you may or may not take, depending on how you look at it, to make your project a better one. Well, we are here to make it. I believe there's no bad project. There's no bad project out there. It's just how can we help you structure this project? If you, if you already had all the answers, you will not come and pitch to us. You came to pitch to us because you don't have all the answers. So 
we are here here to help you get those answers and i think that's what all of us have done today gary Divag, uh, Tolani, uh, Noah that just left, uh, Sonny Mohachi. So that is that is that is what Adoki is all about. It's our, all about sub, it's a support system. It's a, it's a platform that uh, people should come, do their pitching, uh, and if you are corrected, you go back and you come back again. You have to be persistent. You come back again and pitch again. It doesn't matter how many times you pitch until you get what you want, until you get it right. I think this is what we need uh, to, to focus on. So my name is Kingsley Kobayashi. Uh, you, can you can reach me on kingsley.kingsleykobayashi.com. You can reach me at my LinkedIn. Uh, you can reach me at uh, my official Facebook or Instagram. Uh, through La Token, uh, through Sony, she 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 knows how to catch me. Uh, that's through myself and my wife. Thank you very much. You guys have a good time. Thank you, Kingsley. Again, Kingsley, as I said, we are not here to judge you, but we are here to support you. And don't give up until it gets better every time possible. Thank you, Kingsley. Really, really a good uh, feedback. And, uh, and don't forget to read my book, The Beginner's Guide to Financial Freedom. It's a new okay. one. It's out there. It's on Amazon. Written by myself and my wife. It doesn't tell you how to make. It tells you how to get out of debt and things like that. It's very simple written, and uh, I, I think I will send one to Gary. Let, let let him look at it. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much, Kingsley. Devan, over to you, please. Yes, uh, again, thanks, Pascal. I, I echo the sentiment, not here to judge, but here to help. <clears throat> also to all the entrepreneurs out there, I think uh, just one more time, not to belabor the point, don't don't put too much stuff into your deck, stick to the point, 10 slides, 20 minutes, 30-point 30, 30 font, perfect. It sums it up in a nice uh, biblical fashion. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, until, uh, incidentally, Antel has an investment banking arm where we help startups raise from 2 to $10 million. So, Pascal or any of you out there interested, please contact me. I'd be uh, happy to connect you with uh, the person that deals with, uh, you know, fundraising and stuff. We have a global network of investors to help you to help consummate deals. I can be reached on LinkedIn, very active there, Devang Mehta, Antil, you know, there's just one of me at Antil, so you'll find me pretty easily, um, or Devang at AntilVentures.com. But thank you for the wonderful event, Sunny. Uh, great, uh, as usual, and look forward to the next one. Thanks. Thank you, Devang. Really good to have you today as well, judging, not judging, sorry, supporting Pascal. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Pandana. So yeah, uh, first of all, uh, thank you, Pascal, for coming here and, uh, you know, uh, uh, sharing your pitch deck and wonderful pitch deck with us. And thank you, Sunny, for having me here. Um, in this uh, pandemic uh, time, let's stay connected globally on platforms like Latokan. And, uh, you know, feel free to come with your pitch decks on this platform. Uh, you know, stay happy, healthy, and... Uh, Keep your mind always positive. Please do read the book, Power of the Subconscious Mind. Uh, it will really help you uh, grow faster. And uh, I could be reached on LinkedIn. And my website is www.convanto.com. And once again, thank you for having me. Thank you, Vandana. It's always good to have you on BCTV as well. Pascal, coming over to you, how was the experience today? Yeah, I, I really appreciate that. I mean, you guys are all seasoned uh, and experienced like entrepreneurs and uh, investors, especially when I hear Gary that he had already 4,000 pitches. is really unbelievable. <laughs> so, no, I mean, guys, I really appreciate it. Everything, I mean, it's very valuable. Your time is valuable and it's, it's a great thing for any startup you know, to have seasoned people like you. I mean, your time is precious. You know, you know that's the only thing you cannot buy on it's your time and if you give your time to give back i think you know i appreciate it i want to say thank you very much i really care for that and uh, thank you i wrote my notes and I, i'll take it with me in my and, and thanks a lot i appreciate it awesome great so we had a great panel today all of us uh, really enjoyed uh, the pitch that pascal did so do i i also have some questions pascal we can connect uh, after the show thank you so much uh kingsley gary devon uh, Vandana uh, Pascal for joining me today on VCTV. I'll be back tomorrow on another exciting episode of VCTV. Till then, keep safe and keep happy. And bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. It was amazing. Thanks. Bye bye. 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 bye.